I've been working on the gameplay of my Dodo Space Exploration game. And I think... It's starting to come together. So it's been about two months since my last devlog. I thought I might as well just pump out a quick one before exam season kicks off. So now that I've dealt with the whole storyline aspect of Arrested, if if you haven't watched the video, don't don't worry for now. But you know, check it out after this one, okay? Yeah. Okay. It's time for me to make the game, you know, an actual game with like a you know, goal and stuff. By the way, I know this isn't. As much as for nearly three and a half thousand? Jesus Christ! Anyways, it's not quite as much as my previous main devlog, but you know, thanks for the support on that video as well. 220 views in two months is still pretty big for me, like, Jesus. Anyways, let's, um. What was I gonna say here? Well, first off, I want to talk a little about capitalism. America, yeah. Well, by the year 3050, assuming everything goes well, it should be a thing of the past. But communism is really hard to implement in a video game while still being fun, so I'm going to do capitalism instead. Now, one of the main driving principles behind our modern economy is the concept of performing a task for another person and that person rewarding you with an appropriate amount of money. Now in a Resda, you've got an advantage. You've got a spacecraft, which most of the galaxy doesn't, mainly because of how expensive they are. Of course, some are less expensive than others, and in the 3050s, the cheapest ones available are equivalent in expensiveness to a small private plane. However, you're still able to provide services which may not be available to others such as interstellar transportation, delivering patches, providing satellite launch capability, and much more. So how do you go about getting these contracts exactly? Well, the first thing to do is go somewhere inhabited. This could be a space station, city, anywhere you can find people. Here you can access vendor-specific contracts utility tunnels. These will provide you with the contracts which can be selected and then performed. Then, once you know which one you want to complete first, you will need to head to the target system. I added a handy little feature in the warp menu that lets you select a contract system as your target, but uh, you'll need to find your way to the planet yourself. Then, if not a satellite deployment, you'll have to go to the target space station and deliver the package of personal people, or do whatever else you need to do. If not, then you'll have to enter for a specific orbit. This requires an insertion into a specific semi-major axis, inclination and eccentricity around the planet. And it may pose a small challenge for those not familiar with orbital mechanics. Another aspect of capitalism is the idea that certain goods are worth a certain value in certain areas. Buying a good which is low price in one area, and selling it in another area where it's a high priced good, yields profit. This is trading, and it's been a part of space exploration games since Elite. However, I've not implemented it yet. Whilst it was in the Unity version of Arrester, I don't consider it a high priority item at the moment, since a full implementation requires way more technological stuff to do with biomes and oceans and system industries and population and how many space stations they have and whether they have the ability to actually mine the stuff. Also, okay, you get the idea, let's just move on.
By the way, I don't upload particularly regularly, so if you're enjoying the video so far and want to see the next devlog, then, you know, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it a lot. Okay, so, first off, I've added a new space drive to the game called the Spirehawk, which featured in the previous Unity version as an uncontrollable nightmare. Only uncontrollable in the built version, though, which, honestly, I never figured out. I'll probably go over space draft details and specifications in some other video, but basically it's for starter ship. It's bare bones. Don't expect it to fare well against a bigger ship like a Mantis or Hammerhead. Speaking of faring well against bigger ships, I've added something which I've wanted to add to the game for a while now. A battle mode. Basically where you pick a space draft, pick a scenario, and beat the living crap out of some enemy spaceships. And it'll also help me test out combat and figure out AI balancing once I get around to it. And beyond this, I've just added a bunch of other technical stuff in game, which allows me to do some cool stuff. I have the player menu, which contains information about the player, spacecraft, contracts. And I've also added a feature which allows it to be far easier to interact with stuff in game. And it also lets me place menus in game as well. And uses of this system include the contracts utility terminals, which I've already shown off, and a feature which, while I did add it in the previous version of Resda, I never really got around to showing. This is the Uninet terminal, a sort of in-game internet service which runs off of the Hyperwarp Relay, which I talked about in my lore video, and is at the moment only really used for in-game news and in-game tutorials. However, I'll probably also add some functionality that allows for in-game forums and chat rooms, which, and this is assuming that I'm actually going to add multiplayer into the game, or somebody down the line is going to add multiplayer, because chances are I'll never add it. I'll never add multiplayer. So, so if anybody makes a mod or something, I would expect them to use it for this. I would intend that to be the primary mode of communication if playing on a multiplayer server, that forum or chat room. Uh, beyond this, I've made tons of internal improvements to the game, and I've even added a cool new feature which lets me position the stars in the Earth relative sky. This allows me to add the Orion Nebula, the Pleiades, and even the Andromeda Galaxy into the game in their correct positions within the Earth sky and it will allow me to add many more in the future. In addition to these, I've also added comets to the game. One can even be seen in orbit around Tosselin, called Soterius Light. And that's all the major things I can remember adding after the last devlog, but I probably added tons of other stuff, most of which I actually can't remember. They're, they're, they're just all blur into one, to be honest. It's, 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 a, it's a lot for one person to handle. <laughs> but yeah. Definitely been an improvement. So, next steps. Well, I'm probably not going to be working much on a rest of over the next couple of months since A, I've got exams coming up, and B, I, you know, I just want a bit of a break to be honest. I'll mainly be focusing on polishing what I already have in game, and probably begin major work again in July, so yeah, it'll be a while until the next development update from me. However, I will note that as of recently, I found myself just, you know, playing the game. Only about 5 or 10 minutes a session, mind you, because the gameplay loop kind of sucks ass right now since combat is mostly restricted to battle mode and the two contract types currently in game are a bit tedious. However, I think my approach at this point is a good one. Having only focusing on aspects which are, you know, vital to the game's function. And as such, I actually feel way further along in development at about seven months in, compared to the Unity version seven months in. Having implemented procedural generation, large-scale galaxy generation, a fully working contract system, and even excelling past the final version of the Unity version since I have a far less RAM intensive galaxy generation system and even so far as a non-body, actually physically accurate centrifugal gravity system as well. 
and I mean, in general, a much wider scope for the game than I started out with. E even though it is technically smaller compared to the Unity version. Not to mention it's, you know, it's not that you polish shit. Yet. That, that will come with time. But in any case, for those, you know, still left watching this video, I just want to thank everyone who's decided to stick around for the rest of the continued development. I know that's not, you know, a lot of people, but still, you know, thanks to everyone who's decided to stop by and check out what I've been working on for the past couple of years. It, it really means a lot to me. So, yeah, that's about it for this devlog. I, I know it's a bit small, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure I had a video uploaded before I was unable to do so, so, yeah. And with that, I think all that's left to say is, thanks for watching. It's okay, you, you can leave now. <laughs>